Hello there, I'm Ashwarya Kapoor, welcoming you all to the year-end special episode of World Panorama. Our world is changing every day. It is being shaped by several government policies, influenced by the decisions of powerful people and is also swayed by mass movements. The world changes so fast and unexpectedly that it is hard to imagine how different everything was in the years before us. In today's episode of World Panorama, we look at how 2018 looked across the globe, what key political developments took place, natural disasters that shook humanity, how international organizations fared, how powerful men and women changed our world. So let us begin 2018 year-end episode of World Panorama. Twenty eighteen was the year the two Koreas took a significant step to lasting peace. The year indeed was one of surprises by North Korean leader Kim Jong un from his decision to prioritize economic growth over weapons development to his handshake with US President Donald Trump and meeting South Korean President Moon Jae in. In the three rounds of historic summit talks, the two Korean leaders highlighted the unprecedented peace mood on the Korean Peninsula, which has been divided since the 1950s Korean War. Kim and Moon captured the world's attention through their friendly interactions. However, 2018 ends with a stalemate in progress towards denuclearization and uncertainty over whether the stunning diplomacy between the United States, South and North Korea can continue to move forward. Unlike 2017, that saw several provocative speeches and launch of several missiles and equally strong rhetoric by the US president, this year saw the mellowing down of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He announced seizing nuclear tests and putting economic growth first. It all started with sports diplomacy. In February, Kim offered to send a delegation to discuss participating in the Winter Olympics in South Korea. President Moon Jae-in seized upon the gesture arranging a series of talks that saw a statement outlining a range of exchanges in the areas of culture, military and government meant to keep the good vibes going and usher in an era of lasting peace. The talks also culminated in North Korea and Kim's sister attending the Games, the first such visit by a member of the ruling family. Moon also ended up playing a crucial role in arranging Kim's groundbreaking summit with Trump in June and stepping in to smooth ties between the two when talks broke down. The US also agreed to scale down and call off some annual joint military drills with South Korea, which are a perennial source of annoyance for the North. But the story is far from over. On the one hand, North-South relations are closer than they've ever been, with the two sides breaking ground on a joint railway project this week. On the other, there have been signs of frustration, including Moon's failure to secure Kim's visit to Seoul this year as promised. Pyongyang is also bristling over Washington's refusal to lift any of the sanctions that are stifling Kim's efforts to improve his country's economy. The world is closely watching whether the rosy scenario will continue. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. One of the most powerful men in the world, U.S. President Donald Trump, expectedly made a lot of headlines in 2018. Claiming our country is respected all over the world, the unpredictability and suddenness of several of Donald Trump's decisions caught many by surprise. His decisions upended American foreign policy in many cases. For Donald Trump, the year was also one of domestic setbacks, shocks from the Russia probe and belligerence abroad. The year 2018 ends with a partial U.S. government shutdown amid an impasse over funding for President Trump's proposed Mexico border wall. This caps an action-packed year for Donald Trump. Domestically, this year saw the turnover on the presidential staff reaching catastrophic levels. Trump is having trouble filling once coveted positions and the officials he fired and those who have resigned are sometimes unconstrained in criticizing him. Trump's Supreme Court pick, Brett Kavanaugh, was accused of sexual misconduct and Trump responded by denigrating the principal accuser. Trump was accused of misogyny and himself faced multiple claims of sexual misconduct. Trump's legal troubles deepened as his former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, confessed to a string of crimes, including campaign finance violations that directly implicated the president. 
Trump continued to accuse the special counsel Robert Mueller of conducting a witch hunt. By year's end, Mueller's net seemed to be closing. The White House kept also attacking the Federal Reserve over rising interest rates. The US midterm elections handed a sharp rebuke to Trump. The Democrats' blue tsunami of 40 gains in the House of Representatives suggested congressional scrutiny of Trump's activities will increase exponentially in 2018. Trump sought to change dramatically US policy in several spheres. He withdrew all American troops from Syria, partially from Afghanistan. His trade policy included a threat to withdraw from the North American Free Trade Agreement, which was ultimately renegotiated, and the imposition of tariffs on products from Europe, Japan and particularly China. By his words and actions, Trump undermined the UN, the EU, the World Trade Organization, the International Monetary Fund and the North American Free Trade Agreement. He questioned the usefulness of NATO and withdrew the US from the multilateral 2015 nuclear pact with Iran. Trump reneged on the International Nuclear Forces Treaty, a key 1987 arms control pact with Russia, quit the UN's Human Rights Council, cut funding for UN organizations and trampled on multiple UN resolutions by recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The world is increasingly fluid and multipolar. Local conflicts can be the spark that lights much bigger fires. So here is a look at political crises seen in various parts of the world in 2018, whose profound political and economic consequences rippled outward, drawing concern and calls for more cooperative management of world affairs. 2018 will be remembered for worst political crisis in Sri Lanka's history. The year saw an unprecedented power struggle between the president and the prime minister, causing much concern in major world capitals, including in New Delhi. President Maitri Parasilisena's dramatic move to sack Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singhe and install former strongman Mahinda Rajapaksa in his place following differences over policy issues left the country without a functioning government for nearly two months. A Supreme Court verdict forced President Sirisena to reinstate Vikram Singhe on 16th of December, ending Rajapaksa's brief regime. Brexit dominated British politics in 2018 as Theresa May fought to sell her vision for the split to her cabinet, Brussels and eventually MPs. After months of indecision, ministers finally agreed to May's Brexit plan in June. But the EU dismissed some aspects of the deal as unworkable. After negotiations, May finally wrapped up Brexit talks with Brussels in November. But her deal did not appear to please anyone. On 11th of December, May pulled a crucial Commons vote at the 11th hour, saying that the vote would be rescheduled to take place before 21st of January, and enraged MPs in the process. She faced a challenge to her leadership on 13th of December. She won the vote, but the final result underscored the deep division in the Tory party. With her support weak, even within her own party and her negotiating options exhausted, May now is setting up the country for a no-Brexit deal scenario. The Syrian civil war entered its seventh year in 2018 after President Bashar al-Assad's government defeated the Islamic State group. Donald Trump's Syria withdrawal capped off a year of turmoil, shock and devastation in the country. This year saw government forces retaking rebel-held regions in several major offences. The skies over Syria made news throughout the year as there were heavy airstrikes by US-led coalition for the second time in April, following an Assad regime chemical attack. One Israel strike also resulted in a Syrian defence missile downing a Russia plane, killing 15 Russian servicemen. However, there are hopes of peace in 2019, with Russia, Turkey and Iran spurning efforts by the United Nations to change the composition of a committee due to write a new constitution for the country. The committee, due to start work next year, could pave the way for UN-supervised elections and a possible peace process. The Maldives on 1st of February this year plunged into crisis after the Supreme Court quashed terrorism convictions against nine leading opposition figures. Tensions came to a head when Abdullah Yamin's government rejected the ruling and imposed an emergency on 5th of February and arrested the Chief Justice along with several politicians. India, the United States and Britain urged Yamin to honour the rule of law and free the detainees. In the presidential election held on 23rd of September, Yamin failed to be re-elected despite rigging. Ibrahim Mohamed Soli won hands down, securing 58.3% of the total votes polled. 
The first day of 2019 will bring a titanic change to Brazilian politics. Jair Bolsonaro, a former military officer, assumes presidency. Bolsonaro almost grabbed the presidency in the first round of voting on 7th of October, but he made sure of his victory in the second round on 28th, with one of Brazil's most popular politicians, Lula da Silva, barred from running because of corruption conviction. However, Bolsonaro's victory has struck fear into many in the country due to his praise of the military dictatorship, his rhetoric towards the LGBT community and his suggestion that leftist rivals can either go overseas or go to jail. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. While many conflicts continue, the consequence of human decision and action is there for all to see. Political, climatic or humanitarian, our actions are shaping the world that we'll be stepping into. Some stories from 2018 that will remind us of our limitations and our excesses. At least 15 members of a Canadian junior hockey team were killed in a bus crash on April 6th, shocking the hockey-loving nation. 13 other members of the Humboldt Broncos junior hockey team were injured in the accident, which occurred as the team was travelling to a league playoff game in the town of Nipawin, about 200 kilometres northeast of Humboldt. The accident left the entire nation and sports enthusiasts around the world in mourning. The United States, France and Britain launched 105 missiles on April 14, targeting what the Pentagon said were three chemical weapons facilities in Syria in retaliation for a suspected poison gas attack in the Syrian town of Douma on April 7. The videos posted in social media of the suspected chemical attack showed people, including several children, being treated with medicine via inhaler in an emergency clinic in what is said to be Douma, Syria. Many were being hosed down with water. Visuals of lifeless bodies of men, women and children, some of them with foam at the mouth, were the most heart-wrenching visuals of 2018. The visuals of malnourished children in Yemen made headlines this year. Yemen, which is in the midst of a civil war between the Saudi-backed government and the Iranian-aligned Houthi rebel forces, was the site of some of the worst humanitarian conditions on earth. The United Nations pleaded the warring sides to declare ceasefire as the humanitarian situation in Yemen was worsening and agencies needed immediate help to assist the population who are on the brink of famine. UN-sponsored peace talks are on in Sweden and another round of talks will likely take place in the coming months. All members of the Wild Boar's soccer team and their assistant coach were pulled out of a flooded cave in Thailand, bringing to an end a nearly three-week ordeal that prompted an international rescue effort and captivated audiences around the world. The team became trapped in a cave in Thailand's Chiang Rai province on June 23rd when rising floodwaters cut them off deep inside the cave. What began as a local search for the missing 13 turned into a complex rescue operation involving hundreds of experts who flew in from around the world to help. However, there was one fatality, Saman Kunan, a former Thai Navy SEAL, died while supplying oxygen to the boys in the cave. Visuals of glaciers melting, rising pollution levels continued to torment us in 2018. US President Donald Trump followed his 2017 renunciation of the Paris Climate Change Accord with fresh efforts to disrupt action on reducing carbon emissions in fora such as the G7 and the G20. Emissions reached an all-time high in 2018. In October, climate scientists warned global warming could become irreversible in 12 years' time. For yet another year, thousands of refugees faced desperately poor living conditions. Visuals of migrants in limbo at US and Mexican border cities in European towns, those drowning in Mediterranean Sea made shocking stories. However, in December, the UN member states agreed on a historic global deal to manage the migration crisis. The first international pact on movements of people was reached between 164 nations despite US-led objections. The historic, non-binding global pact seeking to better manage migration was approved by delegates from 164 nations following 18 months of debate and negotiation. 
The UN's Global Pact on Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, signed in Marrakesh, is aimed at coordinating action on migration around the world. 2018 saw many natural disasters across the world, resulting in thousands of deaths. From Japan to California and from Kerala to Indonesia, the destruction was massive. Scientists and experts have blamed many of these disasters on climate change. Natural disasters cost $155 billion this year and several of them struck the US particularly hard. More than 8,500 wildfires burned nearly 1.9 million acres in California this year, making it the worst fire season on record. The campfire, which ignited in early November and spread fast, killed 86 people and destroyed the entire town of Paradise. Insured losses from the campfire alone could top $10 billion. Hurricane Michael made landfall just shy of a Category 5, but the storm was the worst-case scenario for Mexico Beach, Florida and its surrounding near Panama City. Michael was third strongest hurricane on record in terms of pressure to make landfall in the United States and had the strongest wind since Hurricane Andrew made landfall in 1992. Economists predict Michael will cost 25 billion US dollars. Hurricane Florence may have weakened significantly before it made landfall in Carolina in early September, but it generated the rain of several storms. Hundreds of thousands of customers lost power in North Carolina, where more than 10,000 fled to shelters before the storm hit. Monk could slam into the North Philippines in September with the strength of Category 5 hurricane, weakened slightly while crossing the South China Sea, and then came face to face with Hong Kong. It was the strongest storm to make landfall in the Philippines since Megi in 2010 and the strongest in Hong Kong since 1983. It killed more than 130 people and did several billion dollars in damage. More than 200 people died this summer as a series of heavy downpours bettered southwest Japan. As much as 71 inches of rain fell in Japan's Shikoku Island over 10 days in late June and early July. Even before the December 22nd tsunami, earthquakes in Indonesia had been catastrophic this year. Then, just a few days before Christmas, one of the most active volcanoes in the world exploded in a violent eruption and triggered underwater landslides, which led to a tsunami that killed more than 400 people. Around 1,500 others were injured in the coastal regions. The East Rift Zone of Kilayu volcano in Hawaii exploded to life this spring, becoming far more active than normal. Several neighborhoods burned down and were buried by the molten rock that spewed from the Big Island volcano. There were no deaths from this slow motion eruption, but it will end up costing around 1 billion US dollars. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Leaders bring change. Some rise despite the severity of their immediate circumstances, while others flounder in the face of challenge. Here is a look at some leaders who consolidated their position in 2018, earning the approval of their people, rising in popularity charts, and some others who failed to make the cut. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe this year enters his seventh year in office. Abe's current term as president of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party ends in September 2021. He will become Japan's longest serving post war Prime Minister next year counting his first stint in office and surpass his great uncle Aisaku Sato for the longest continuous term in August 2020. By the time he leaves office, he will have earned the title of Japan's longest serving Prime Minister. China's leader Xi Jinping consolidated his hold on power following a decision by the National People's Congress in March to abolish term limits, effectively appointing him President for life. The Communist Party tightened its control over civil society groups, the media, the internet and academic and religious institutions. Challenging the government became a more perilous activity than ever. Presidential elections were held in Russia on the 18th of March this year. Incumbent Vladimir Putin won the re-election for his second consecutive and fourth overall term in office with 77% of votes. He used Russia's hosting of the Football World Cup in June to further entrench his position. 
Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan consolidated his power with an election win in June. Erdogan won a new five-year term after securing outright victory, getting nearly 53% of votes. His closest rival was on 31%. After his win, the post of Prime Minister was abolished. Here's a look at world leaders whose popularity went down and in their role as a chief, they look to be struggling in 2018. Emmanuel Macron of France looked like the Western world's great hope with his sweeping reform plans and a grand vision for a tighter-knit EU. But he ends the year in retreat as he had to deal with the Yellow West movement that started as a protest against a small increase in fuel taxes but grew into a violent anti-elite rebellion. Macron has undermined his reform ambitions by making concessions to the Yellow West but his popularity hasn't recovered. German Chancellor Angela Merkel spent most of the year hobbled by an open revolt within her party, the Christian Democratic Union, and its Bavarian sister party, the Christian Social Union. The conservative rebels paralyzed the government, demanding tougher immigration policies and forcing Merkel into exhausting backroom battles that left her drain. The union performed badly in two important state elections and Merkel was forced to give up the party leadership. Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, once feted as a bold reformer, has seen his reputation destroyed by the October murder of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. The brutal act has undermined international support for the Crown Prince. It was also not a good year for Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Beset by domestic protests and hit again by US sanctions, from which European powers have been unable to protect it, Khamenei was seen struggling on various fronts. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Life always has a bright side. There are stories of hope, achievements, stories that are inspiring, empowering and heartwarming. Here are some just memorable stories in 2018 that made us smile and brought hope for humanity's better future. After a six-month journey of more than 300 million miles, NASA's InSight lander arrived at Mars on 26th of November, plunking down for a two-year mission to study the interior of the Red Planet. The dramatic landing was NASA's first on Mars since 2012, Days after landing, the InSight snapped its first selfie using a camera on its robotic arm and also captured the first sounds of wind blowing on Mars. It was a big year for private space companies. SpaceX launched its first spy satellite, several communication satellites and a handful of space station resupply missions. But the company's most talked about feat was the debut launch of its Falcon Heavy rocket, the world's most powerful rocket. SpaceX expects the Falcon Heavy to power future manned missions to the space station, moon and Mars. Chinese scientists announced that they are planning to launch an artificial moon into orbit by 2020 to illuminate city streets after dark. Scientists are hoping to hang the man-made moon above the city of Chengdu, the capital of China's southwestern Sichuan province. The imitation celestial body, essentially an illuminated satellite, will bear a reflective coating to cast sunlight back to Earth where it will supplement street lights at night. The year saw most lavish bashes. Britain's Prince Harry and Meghan Markle tied the knot on 19th of May. The televised ceremony, which was viewed by billions the world over, gave the couple two official titles, Duke and Duchess of Sussex, as well as husband and wife. In India, Isha Ambani and Anand Piramal wedding was the top highlight. The Ambani's hosted pre-wedding celebrations at Udaipur, which included a private performance by none other than Beyonce, who was flown in especially for the festivities. The couple tied the knot in Mumbai with luminaries like Hillary Clinton in attendance. Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas's nuptials also made for one of the most googled weddings of the year. A vibrant Mehendi function at Jodhpur's Umed Bhavan Palace, followed by a fun-filled Sangeet, an Indian ceremony complete with a mandap was preceded by a traditional Christian wedding, all made for amazing pictures.
Well, this brings us to the end of this special episode of World Panorama. And yes, we will continue to bring you the latest news and developments from the globe in 2019 as well. We'll see you in the new year with the promise to bring the best and complete view and analysis of all the international stories. As countdown to usher in New Year 2019 begins, we'll leave you with the visuals of preparations at the iconic Times Square in New York, where 192 new sparkling triangles will adorn the New Year's Eve ball. As the clock strikes midnight on 31st of December, about 1 million people are expected to celebrate at the Times Square and watch the New Year's Eve ball drop. So take a look and wishing you all a very happy new year from the entire team of Rajasabha Television. Bye-bye.